Hey guys, just a quick word. YouTube has demonetized us once again, so if you want to support No Jumper and what we do over here on this YouTube channel, there are three easy ways. First off, the free options. That would be liking, commenting, subscribing, or just telling a friend. Or you could head on over to NoJumper.com and buy a shirt like the one I'm wearing right now or one of the products featured right here. The third way and one of the best ways to support this channel is to actually hit up one of our live streams and have us play your music. We charge $100 per song, but it gives you a really good way to get feedback on your content. Plus, it really helps keep us uh, making content since we can rely on those donations. The podcasts don't always make so much money, but those help a lot. So appreciate everybody for supporting. Let's get right into this content. If nah. you're going to make money, you should spend the money on hiring people that are smarter than you, at, at least in one part of the business. You know, right, for sure. Or like for me, a lot of times I have to hire people who are like more social than me because I'm just not that good at like remaining in contact with people. You know, I just don't think I'm good at like remaining. Well, it's it's a partially a problem of just numbers because it's like, you know, if when you inter like interview hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in a year, it's like you might want to stay in touch with them so you could keep, you know, a friendship going or whatever. But it's just so hard to like even like every, like tomorrow I got two more interviews. So it's like the interviews I did yesterday are already kind of like falling into the back of my brain. And that's what makes me feel yeah. guilty is that it's like, you know, I met Rhapsody yesterday and interviewed her and she was so she's so dope. dope. Yeah. So dope. I fuck with her. If I was less busy, I feel like she's the kind of person that I might hit you up can hang out with. once a week. Be like, yeah. yo, how you doing? Yeah. But I don't have those kind of relationships because I'm so wrapped up in this business shit. Do you yeah. feel like that? Hell yeah. But that's what like people around you is supposed to be for like, like my uncle I just spoke about, or like my cousin or or my manager, they keep, they, like it's a, a community that helps keep everybody connected. Mm. Because they know I'm I'm out here like trying to, you know, shake and move. So like it's, it's hard for me to personally sometimes, you know, keep in contact with people. But what I do is, the best way I do it is like, the moment I think about somebody, I just hit them and be like, yo, what's good? Just mm. shout you out. But for the most part, they keep in contact with people like, yo, I just spoke to so-and-so, like they gonna be in the city. So, because even when it comes to artists, I'm not even with, I'm not even talking to like YG all the time or talking to whoever, like, but he might be talking to their security or talking to like the homies that's part of their crews mm. and making sure that we connect when, whenever we hit these cities. And a lot of those people too, like, I know YG, and I think YG's incredible, but it's like, I know he's busy as fuck. I'm not trying to bother him or nothing, yeah. but you know that that's the kind of person that if he all, like, one of these days, YG ain't going to be around, and you're going to be thinking, damn, like, did I actually put in enough effort that I could have to really have appreciated that person while they were around? Damn, why you say that? Like that? Not, not like he's going to be gone tomorrow, <laughs> God, but that's how damn. it is. But whenever somebody's gone, don't you end up thinking, fuck. I wish I, I no, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but God, don't you end damn. up thinking like, damn, I didn't, I could have appreciated their existence no, a lot more while they were gonna here. He's going to be around for a very long okay, time. Okay, YG specifically, I 100% agree. <laughs> nah, um, yeah, like that's with everybody though. That's with your mother. That's with anybody that you care about. You just, you just got to make the effort. Like no matter how busy they are, how busy you are, you just got to. Because it's just like, I always tell people like, people like, yo, I know you've been busy. I hate hearing that shit. <laughs> and don't tell me, I know you've been busy. Like, it's I'm going to, to start I'm ASAP Ferg, I'm going to be busy all the time. Mm -hmm. But like, you could come hang out with me while I'm busy. Like, come like do these interviews, come sit in a room with me or whatever. Could, and we'll go to lunch and catch up. And, and that's just how it has to be for me because that's how my life is. Mm. Structure right now, I guess, until like I get older and things are slow down and I'm... I'm running my business from the crib or something like. But do you ever think about that? Do you ever think like maybe I'm gonna just intentionally accept less offers to go do stuff, accept less shows, and just really let my life just slow down a lot and just really appreciate things? Or do you feel like if you do that, you're gonna get left behind? I did that last year. Okay. I ain't put out an album in two years. Mm. Um, I feel like we still see like you floor seats. Yeah. So so that's the thing. Like like, and we strategically did it. Like I sat down with my team and we were just like. I was feeling burnt out. I ain't stopped since mm. I had started. Um, touring, flying, I was just like fucking tired. Um, I'm seeing cousins that like, you know, I'm, I'm not seeing my cousins, but when I see them, they like fucking big and shit. I'm like, damn, I'm not seeing, do they know me? Like, do they know me through the TV? So it's just like, I had to slow my life down. I had took more corporate gigs because it's like you could get the big bag doing corporate mm. gigs. 
<laughs> I always think about that and how it's gonna happen, but it, it didn't. It doesn't usually happen. It didn't just, happen today. They just trot back and forth with the high heels. <laughs> the way you reacted, she got the heavy heels. <laughs> we might have to move out of here. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but yeah. So like, I just took more corporate gigs because you could get like the 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 price of three shows or the money you'll mm. get from three shows. You can probably do like one corporate gig and get that. So I just started working smarter and not harder and not burning myself out. And it allowed me to like spend more time with my family. And I did take a step back because I needed to like, and I need to get inspired again. Mm. So. But when you talk about the corporate gigs versus like the real shows, like do, do you have that feeling of like when you play a show to a thousand people that it feels super intimate and passionate and exciting? And then if you pay, play a show to 10,000 people that it feels like a little bit less intimate it might be cool because you can see a fucking huge crowd going crazy yeah but when you play the smaller shows you kind of get a more intimate experience do you have that issue with doing like corporate shows versus your um, shows corporate shows is way different because it's like like say like a hennessy event or something like that like i'll pull up and or like a tiffany's event i'll pull up and do a show but it's really like i'm kicking it with everybody versus like the full on like lights and the production and all of that. So it's more very more intimate, very much more intimate. And you can't expect them to like go too crazy as they would go at a show show. Mm. Because like they might be it might be after work. They got on shoes still. Like it's just different. It's white people, basically. Nah. It's not, <laughs> nah. There's people in like ties, nah. people who work in offices and shit. Nah, hell no. You'll be surprised, man. I bring out I mean, that's why they work with me. I bring out the crowd. Like, I bring out, like, cool people. So you're going to see some punks. You're going to see some um, hippies. You're going to see some turned-up black people. You're going to see everything in there. Can we get the story behind the, uh, what was that, the Uzi video where you did it at that hardcore show? Oh, yeah. I always so wanted that to wasn't know even, what the fuck that, that wasn't that was. a show. Oh, we, you did it just for the I video I did a shoot. show. Okay. I, well, I did a well, it, it was a show, but I put on a show. Right. Basically. I forget the band names. Oh, I forget too. Yeah, but my boy Adam DeGross, I'm not sure if you know who that is. Uh, photographer. He 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 shot like a lot of my stuff. Now he's like shooting like post Malone stuff. Okay. So I, think I might know him. Yeah, he sh he shoots a lot of those guys. So I'm like, yo, I want this to be the theme of the video. So I'm like, yo, how can we like grab these people when? And I'm like, we just thought about it on tour. And he was just like, yo, let's just do a show. So we did a show. I was the headliner. And that's when I performed the song. How'd you feel about the love that you got from that fan base? Like, was it, it was exciting? crazy. It was like a new world. Because they're punching each other in the face. Yeah. <laughs> but that shit was fire. That shit looks so amazing. Crazy, yeah. And the energy was amazing. Like, fucking seeing people really pull up with, like, the crazy mohawks and, like, the clothes and... Like they was in on a fashion shit too. Like so, mm. it was just so much stuff that we had in common. But they're not even thinking of it as fashion. They're just really wearing some ratty vest that they sewed all these different patches and pins on. But they're not thinking of it in the like you're looking like at it fly. from a fashion perspective of like, wow, that would look appropriate on like a runway or some yeah. cool ass new company's line. They're just like that to them is just like, oh, I want to let everybody know what bands I like. So I got a bunch of patches on this jacket. But I feel like that that took a conscious thought too. Like mm -hmm. you thought you had to think about that. Like, oh, this is cool. Like because I got all my bands, and also I do think that they think about their fashion because I was looking at like an interview on Sex Pistols, and um, this dude uh, McLaren, yeah. Malcolm McLaren, because they came out of like a weird sex punk type shop that was exactly. all the weird bondage. That's how he was meeting the kids. Like all of the kids would come buy their clothes from his shop. Mm. So they they had to consciously think about what they was wearing, whether it was colors or like a fucking whatever it was, like a latex mask or whatever the fuck it was. Mm. Yeah, they were on some wild shit. Yeah. I feel like when I saw that video, it was just cool because I could tell that the people, like I could tell it wasn't just a bunch of extras hired to be in the video and that it was nah, actual fans. Was real people that with were, missing teeth and all types <laughs> Shit. And they were just excited <laughs> as fuck. Cause like a lot of times, you know, nowadays people will maybe like wear a punk band shirt or some shit, but they don't really fully embrace that culture. And I think that when you look at that culture, it's really not that different from rap. It might be more abrasive. Yeah. They got a different style, different attitude right. about certain things, but yeah. it's like, I don't know. Some, I feel like they were appreciative of you sort of putting on for them. Yeah, I always I always think about that too because I like wearing band shirts and sometimes I don't be knowing like who all the bands is. And I used to be like, damn, like, am I gonna be like considered a poser? And it's like, nah, I can't because I really I'm a fan of the art. 
the mm. art looks dope. But I do think it's it's cool to discover the shirt and then like do research on it to just know why you like it or why you're wearing it. Mm. Because it's like a rack of it's like a rack of shirts, like Iron Maiden made, made and just different shit that I see people wearing, but they don't really know the background behind it. Mm. Like for me, um, I love the artist that does like all of the uh the Pink Floyd like art and shit like that. Uh-huh. I haven't really dove into the catalog of Pink Floyd, right. but I know it's like diehard Pink Floyd fans out there. But like, I'm really a fan of the art of the covers, the whatever, the the stage, like when they had the plane crash into the stage, all of that shit. I didn't really even get into the music yet. Yeah. So I still got time to do that. Yeah, and I think it's like you can appreciate a band for something besides their music in yeah, the same sure. way that like, you know, you could appreciate, uh, you know, the characters from a movie or like, you know, you, like I, you could appreciate a video game based on a movie and then not really care about the movie. movie right. That's a fact. It's okay. Cause it's like the realistically, the art is just as big a part of yeah. the band in itself. How much? Nah, you, Cause people like to call you out. They'd be like, Oh, you got that shirt on. Like what you know about, you know what I'm saying? Cause I felt like that a hundred percent when I was a kid. Cause I would be going to the skate shop to buy like BMX brand shirts. And then I'd be thinking, like, I'm going to be going to school. I'm, like, 14. I'd be thinking, like, I'm going to go to school and, like, I can't even 180. I'm going to be wearing this shirt. Are people going to be giving me a hard time? Right. And now, they would. you just a fan of the culture. Yeah. No, and I just, I wanted to be into it so bad. And yeah. I was trying so hard. That's how it starts, I was just brand though. new. Yeah. Everybody starts off like that. You got to be a fan first. Mm. And then you get into it. Yeah. And this but, shit got me burping. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the rules have just changed a lot, you know, like, in the sense that, I mean, I know so many rappers that I see them wearing Slayer shirts, and I know they ain't never heard Slayer. And, but part of me is kind of like, bro, I would like to, I would like if you just had to sit down for like forty five minutes and just listen to some Slayer, and then just yeah. report back to me and tell me what you think about it, because right. I'm very curious to know what you would think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure, definitely. Um, so do you think a lot about like the visuals attached to your stuff? Like when you when you think about your overall career, how important are aesthetics? Because we're talking about how like with Pink Floyd, you could appreciate it without even necessarily caring about the music that much. Bro, like I, that's that's what I think takes the music so long to come out. Sometimes it's really? just like when I don't have the rollout and the proper like photos and the videos to go with it. Like that shit is a hundred percent the reason why like. Sometimes it takes so long for me to put music out because yeah. I I believe that visually people need to see, you know, something that represents the music you're putting out. Like it it just all comes together to me. Yeah. Like I could like I I'd be dropping songs every day out of the year if I didn't have to shoot videos. Right. But like to me the visual is so important. Yeah, it would be so weird to because I I was listening to somebody have that conversation the other day and they were like. I would like to listen to Young Thug in the way that every night when Young Thug records six songs, I just get to listen to him. And I'm like, I don't think you actually want to listen to Young Thug. Oh, they want to hear like the creative. Like if you could just hear it every night and not have to wait and then get the 10 songs every six months or however often a rapper chooses to drop. Like, could you imagine if there was like a. You'll get tired of. You'll get tired of. You don't want to hear the yeah. drafts, yeah. basically. It's like right. you want to hear the 10 best ASAP Ferg songs at the yeah. end of that year that he came up with, not the fucking five songs that he fucked around and experimented yeah. with every night. I feel like that's what makes the hits mm. is like you like discovering something, you coming up with a style, and then you finally like it hits and you're like, oh, this is, this is what it is. Mm. I discovered it. Now I'm going to keep practicing this style until like I really get something golden out of it, and then that's the one that you – Mm. You go it because I I record so much, but everything I record don't go out. Like the um, ride song that I did with uh, Ty Dolla Signs, that's four years old. Really? Yep. Wow. And the um, also the one that I got with Burnt Fires, the Dreams, Fairy Tales, and Fantasies, uh, I did that with Salon Remy four years ago. Why did you sit on it for so long? Because like I just. It was a different song for me. One, it was very like. I don't know. I probably overthought it. Did you re-record your vocals? Because you nah. probably sounded different back then, right? Nah, no? I didn't re-record them. Wow, that's interesting. All, all we did was just put Burnt Fires on it. Uh-huh. Yeah, and that was all we did. That's so that interesting. That was new. Yeah.